Hello, everyone. I'm Jia Yi Wang from Tsinghua University. Today, I'm going to introduce our paper, Callsites or Multiple Tables for Facial Rich and Data Efficient Machine Learning. Successful machine learning is to learn from good data. However, one common issue about training data for machine learning practitioners is the lack of good features. To mitigate this problem, facial augmentation is often employed by enriching features from multiple tables so as to become feature-rich machine learning. For example, consider a machine learning task that predicts the score value of a movie based on features such as movie ID, title, length, and box office. Intuitively, because many important features are missing, such as the features of directors of a movie, it is hard to train a good machine learning model. Fortunately, we can augment the features of movie with other four tables. The feature-rich table with new features augmented through drawings, denoted by movie plus, is shown in the red figure. With feature-rich machine learning, the trained model can achieve better accuracy. Data-efficient machine learning aims to improve training efficiency. Generally speaking, there are two aspects to do such acceleration. From the algorithm perspective, we can use SJD to improve the training efficiency. We can also do this from the data perspective. That is, we can accelerate by reducing the number of training items, and intuitively, the efficiency will be improved, which is the concept of the core site. There are many recent, recent efforts on selecting a trained data subset that can, that can theoretically and practically perform on with the full data set. Note that the two perspectives are orthogonal and complementary. That is, we can run SJD on the core side. In order to achieve both feature rich and data efficient machine learning, an intuitive solution is to first conduct feature augmentation through joints across multiple relational tables, followed by performing call site selection over the train data with enriched features. Before we discuss the problem we study in the paper, let's analyze the benefits and limitations of the aforementioned strategies using real experiments. The first choice is training with the base table. If we train a machine learning model using the base table T for a multi-classification task, the accuracy is relatively low, and it uses 11 minutes for training. Secondly, if we first compute the call site of the base table, and then train a machine learning model using the computed call site, we can also achieve a similar accuracy, but use 2 minutes in total for selecting the call site and training with the call site. This shows that using call site can significantly reduce the training time without sacrificing the accuracy. Besides, we can also train with the augmented table or the call side of the augmented table. These are shown as method 3 and method 4 in this page. We can observe that all the training with the augmented table can achieve a much higher accuracy. It takes a much longer time, because as we know, the process of feature augmentation consists of one-to-many or many-to-many -many joints. Therefore, the size of the augmented table is likely to be much larger than the base table. This example tells us that the feature augmentation can significantly increase the accuracy, and training with the core site can significantly reduce the time. However, computing the core site over a large table, for example, the augmented table, is time consuming. Therefore, in order to efficiently compute the core site of the augmented table, the problem we aim to tackle is whether we can compute the core site of the augmented table without joint materialization. To dive into this problem, let's first analyze how the core site is selected for a single table. Most machine learning models use gradient design to train and we have to compute the sum of gradients of all train atoms. So the gradient-based call set selection is to select a subset of the full, such that the call set gradient is as close to as possible to the full gradient, that is, minimizing the gradient approximation error. Since the call set is a subset of the full, 
how can we make the cosine gradient equal to the full gradient? The answer is that we assign a weight on each individual example. Let us use an example of the cosine selection. The left one is the full train side, and the right one is the cosine, which includes three tuples and are associated with two mappings. The first mapping gamma is simple. For example, gamma 2 equals 4 indicates that the second item in cosine C is the fourth one in orig original table T. The second mapping phi is important. It shows that tuple I in T is represented by tuple J in C, and the weight of tuple I in C equals to the number of tuples in T that points to tuple I. In this example, suppose that similar colors indicate similar gradients. Current cosine C is a good cosine. The reason is that each color of tuples in T are represented by a very similar tuple in C. The weight of the three tuples are 3, 2, 3 respectively. And then the gradient approximation error is minimized, close to zero. Therefore, cosine selection is to select a subset with a fixed size such as well as the mappings, which determines the weights. The basic cosine algorithm is illustrated in the figure. Initialized with an empty cosine C, a cosine of size K is achieved using three nested for loops. Each iteration of the first for loop will add tuple with the maximum utility to the cosine. The utility of a tuple denotes the reduction of gradient approximation error after adding the tuple into the cosine. Each iteration of the second iteration will compute the utility of a tuple T that is not in the cosine. In the third for loop, it, is, it iterates all tuples in T to compute the utility of the tuple being mirrored in the second for loop. Finally, it computes the weight of each tuple in the cosine, which will be used to appro approximate the full gradient. Apparently, the solution with three loops is rather time-consuming. Fortunately, cosines satisfy the submodular property. Based on this property, an efficient method can accelerate the second for loop that uniformly samples a tuple size S and selects the best one from the sampled one. With sampling, it still holds a relatively good approximation ratio. Now, let's come to cosine of multiple tables, which is the scenario in feature-rich machine learning. As we have mentioned, a natural solution is first to feature, do feature augmentation by executing the joints, and then use the above cosine selection on the materialized result. However, since the materialized wheel might be very large, the efficiency of cosine selection is low. To solve this problem, our key idea is to estimate the utility of each group without joint materialization. Here, a group refers to a set of tuples in the joint re results that have the same attribute values on a predefined set of attributes. Conceptually, the utility can be estimated by first computing the facial similarity of tuples in each individual table, and then aggregating them using a dynamic programming algorithm without joint materialization. By doing so, we can significantly reduce the computation in the third for loop, thus improving the overall efficiency. Our solution is inspired by the classical SQL query optimization technique pushdown that moves predicates in the real clause closer to the tables they refer to. In our context, push down for cosine or multiple tables means that we can approximately compute the gradient of each individual table and sum up its gradient from multiple tables to compute the full gradient. That is, the gradient computation is pushed down. Next, we'll prove that the full gradient can be bounded using partial facial similarity values in each individual tables of different groups. Firstly, Using the definition of weights, we have this equation. We can then use this equation to first transform the gradient approximation error like this. After that, we can apply triangle inequality. 
We can form the aforementioned example. Intuitively, the right hand will be minimized when the mapping fine is decided to assign each tuple in T plus to the closest tuple in the call side with regard to the gradient. So the right hand can actually be rewritten as this. After that, by leveraging max mean inequality, we can get the following expression. Furthermore, from convex problem, there is a theorem that the gradient difference can be bounded by the Euclidean difference between feature vectors. Therefore, we can conclude that the gradient approximation error can be bounded independent of the optimization problem in practice. Thus, we come to this result. Finally, we get the following bound. And minimizing the error becomes to maximizing this value. This expression actually denotes the cosine score, and we want to select the cosine with the maximal score. In our paper, we proved that this problem is NP-hard, and we also proved that this problem also has a submodular property, so we can also use the aforementioned sampling optimization. We will next describe the proposed algorithm for this problem. The proposed method can compute this, sim this similarity efficiently, such as reducing the cosine selection time. Here is an overview of our proposed recon pro algorithm. It accelerates the computation in the third for loop. To obtain such acceleration, it first pre-computes the feature similarity in each individual table. After that, during the cost selection, the feature similarity computation can be accelerated by simply aggregating its partial results. The reason we can pre-compute the partial feature similarity is that each, each feature vector in T plus can be represented by the concatenation of sub-vectors from different tables. Intuitively, to capture the feature difference in T plus, we can first compute the partial feature similarity inside each table. Hence, we push down the computation to each, each individual table as a pre-computation step. To be specific, for each table, the feature vector difference of any tuple pair is computed. Then, given the joint tree, group K, and pre-computation results, the feature similarity in T plus can be computed by aggregating the results in each table without materializing T plus. To this end, we propose a dynamic programming algorithm to efficiently compute the feature similarity between each group and each tuple in the call side. For more details, please refer to our paper. For, more, for experiment, we used five real-world datasets that covered various data characteristics and machine learning tasks to verify the performance of Recon. For effectiveness, we show the test performance on different data sites for different baselines and Recon. We can observe that Recon almost has the same accuracy as using full data. This can because Recon can well approximate the full gradient accurately with theoretical guarantees. Meanwhile, the size of the selected call size is less than 1% of the size of the full data. For efficiency, we show the total time including both cost and selection and model training for different baselines and recon. We can see that, in general, recon achieves an efficiency improvement of nearly two orders of magnitude compared with FU. We also conducted experiments of varying cost and size. And this figure shows the training loss for different baselines. We can see that Recon converges to almost the same loss as full, which demonstrates that Recon can accurately estimate the gradient with the theoretical guarantees, and thus achieve the same performance as the full data. Finally, to summarize, in this paper, we propose Recon, an algorithm that can efficiently select call sites or relational data. We have made the code available on GitHub. If you have any questions, Feel free to ask. Thank you.